Do you struggle with using infusible ink and you want to know some tips and tricks, especially for trying to layer infusible ink? If so, you've come to the right place. Hello everyone and welcome to Crafting with Delonda. It's me again, Delonda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, we will be working with infusible ink. I'm going to demonstrate how to layer infusible ink using two of the templates that can be found on my Etsy shop or on my website, craftingwithdelonda.com. At the end of this video, if you find it helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, let's look at the materials and jump right in to Cricut Design Space. The materials I'm using for this project include my Cricut Maker. I'm using several different boxes of infusible ink, a green standard grip mat. I'm also using butcher paper, two make market shirts that I purchased from Michaels, Cricut heat resistant tape, and I will use the 16 by 20 auto open wallet press that's back there. I'm also using templates that are available on my Etsy shop or on my website at craftingwithdelonda.com. So now without further ado, let's head over to the computer and right into Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and I'm connected to the Cricut Maker. The first thing I'm going to do is upload the two files that I'm planning to use. The first one is this one that is called Strong and I'm uploading the SVG of the file. I am going to go ahead and click View now that it's on the canvas. Now that I can see it's here, the first thing I'll do with the file is I will resize it. So I know that I want the size of the file to be right at a probably about 10.8. I can look over here in my layers panel and see that it's still all grouped together. I know that it's grouped together because I do have the option to ungroup it. However, I'm not going to ungroup it until I resize it. So I'm going to just stretch it out a little bit. And I think 10.8 is, like I said, a fair size. If I want to make it a little bit taller i can also do that okay so it's a little bit too big let's go back to 10.8 let's do 10.8 by let me unlock it let's do by six i like that and now that I have this size that I want, I'll go ahead and lock the proportions back together and now I will ungroup it so I can start to change the colors. So what I want to make sure of is that the scripture and the outline are the same color. So in this case, the, here's the scripture. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to hold the, I'm going to grab the outline, which is the black layer. And what I'm going to do is attach those and this pink layer is not attached and that's exactly what i want because what i'm going to do with the black layer is use one color of infusible ink and for the pink layer i'll use a different color all right so we have this one finished and i'll just take all of this and move it over to the side and i'll do the same thing with the second file i'm also going to do um infusible ink with the word loved and once again i'm using the svg of the template so i'm going to add it to my canvas i'm going to click view and i'm going i can see it's already unlocked and that's fine i'm going to select the whole thing and i'll i'll unlock it and i'll make sure the size is the same 10.8 by and I want the height of it to be 6.0. And I like that. All right. Now I can ungroup this and I can do the same thing that I just did. So I'm going to select the scripture and I'm going to select the outline by just holding my shift key. I'm going to attach the two of those just like that. And the green layer will be separate. Now I'm ready to go ahead and click make all of these 
um, files or every part of the files, they're all saved as basic cuts because when you're working with Infusible Ink, you should be working with it as a basic cut. Okay, I'm going to click Make. I'm not going to save this. I can get back to this very easily. So the first layer is the black layer of Strong. I'm going to mirror this. And the second matte is going to be the black layer of the word Loved. I'm going to mirror this. The third matte is um, Loved, the inner part. I'm going to mirror that. And the fourth layer is the in part in the inner part of the word strong. Now let me see if I can move this uh, inside part of the word strong over to this third mat. So I'm not using four mats because I really don't think I need four mats. So let's click move object and let's move it to this third mat if it'll fit. And if not, I'll just move it back. Okay, that is really pushing it. That is really really pushing it. I don't feel comfortable about doing that. So I'm going to put it back on the pink mat. All right. So, and I'm still going to have it up here and I'm going to mirror this mat if it will allow me to do that. Okay. All right. So I have all four mats prepared. I'm going to click continue and I'm going to select the infusible ink transfer sheets for my materials. And I'm going to get them all cut with the default pressure. So my computer is still looking for my Cricut Maker. Here's the infusible ink transfer sheet setting. Infusible ink transfer sheet, make sure mirror is turned on. The mirror is turned on on all four mats. I'm using the default pressure. And everything I'll do from here will be back on the camera. I have my first mat and I have the first box of infusible ink. I'm going to use this dark layer as the outline for the word strong. I'm going to open the box of infusible ink. And when you see what's inside the box, you'll see that there are four sheets in this box. And these are the four different colors. So there's red, there's like a denim pattern, there's a plaid, and then there's like a dark gray color. And I'm going to get this put on the mat face up. Inside the package of infusible ink, there is butcher paper and there's also a lint cloth. You can just kind of remove that. I'm going to put this on the mat face up. And I'm going to use my brayer to go over the mat, to go over the infusible ink. and I'm going to get this cut out. I'll speed this part up. I have the next mat already prepared and ready to start cutting so I can get to the second design. But before I start to work with the templates i'm going to start weeding this on camera so you can see my process for weeding the infusible ink and getting it layered to be placed on the shirt so this will be cutting but i will be weeding this part over here okay i have the outline or of the word strong and i also have the part that is going to be the inner part of the word strong. And what I'm going to do is cut away the excess that I don't plan to use.
and what I'm going to do is weed this away. So I'm going to use my fingers like this. So this did get a really good cut. So now I'm going to remove all of the inside parts of the word strong. So here's the first layer. Now I'm going to take the second layer and I'm instead of taking the, I'm only going to use the inner part and I'm going to put it here on the inside of this. I'm going to speed this part up. Okay, I finished the first template. Now I'm going to repeat that exact same process for the second template, which is loved. I have all of the infusible ink ready to be pressed on the shirt, but I think it's important that I stop right here and just kind of encourage you because I know this is not easy. It wasn't easy to get it all weeded. I will say, take your time. Realize that this is a sped up process because I don't want to just keep you all day. So if you look carefully, you can see that my O is not completely lined up on the inside right here. If that bothers you, just kind of peel it up until you have it in place where you want it to go. If I turn this over and I look at it, I can tell where it's not completely aligned perfectly. And, you know, in any of those places where it might bother me, I would move it. But for the most part, I think this, it looks good. I think it's going to press very nicely on, on my shirt. Let's look at this second one or the first one. Kind of the same thing i can see that the end is not completely lined up so if that's bothering me i can move that um, the white parts the parts that didn't cut out all the way i'm not worried about it because the shirts are white and that's not gonna transfer to the shirt so if, when you are looking at yours if any part of it you know causes you to pause or rethink it just pick it up and move it over. That's all you have to do. Okay, I think this is good and ready. I think it's good and ready. So I have strong and I have loved. I'm a little, little bit concerned about this O right here, but I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to be okay. All right, and now let's move over to the heat press. The shirt that I'm using is a Make Market brand shirt that I purchased from Michaels, and it is 100% polyester. So what I'm going to do is remove the tag, and I'm going to fold the shirt in half and get a crease down the middle, and I'm going to do a quick pre-press on the shirt.
Now I'm going to put butcher paper inside the shirt so that none of the infusible ink goes through to the other side of the shirt. Is loved. I'm going to place it like three fingers down from the collar and I'm using <clears throat> the crease in the middle to line it up so the V is like right in the middle of the crease and I'm going to use a little bit of heat resistant tape And I'm going to put butcher paper on top of this. I'm gonna press this on 400 degrees for 60 seconds. Okay, I've done my pre-press. I'm going to put butcher paper inside the shirt. Three fingers down from the collar right here. And I'm going to add some heat resistant tape. And I'm adding butcher paper on top. And I'll press this on 400 degrees for 60 seconds. Okay, the second shirt is finished. Let's go back over to the table so I can give you my final thoughts, do the peel reveal, and answer some of the frequently asked questions I get about infusible ink. Okay, let's do the peel reveal on the first one. Oh, I know you can already see it looks really, really good. Okay, so it's green. It looked like it was blue before that. Look at that. So that is loved. And it has the paisley pattern on the outline and then it's green on the inside. I think it's very pretty, but I thought it was blue. The paper looked blue, but I think it's very, very pretty. Let me take the butcher paper from inside. Okay, so let me let you get a good, good look at that. I think it's very, very pretty. Now remember, Infusible ink is sublimation ink, so the ink is in the fabric. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to wash away. Hopefully, you can see that it's it's in top. It's inside. It's it's infused into the fabric. It's not going anywhere. I think it's very very pretty. Let's look at the second one. I think we're all going to love this one more. So let's look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That is so pretty. Look at that. Okay, so that is the mermaid pattern and it has um, an outline of blue and I think it's gorgeous. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. I just, I love it. So let me answer some of the frequently asked questions I get about using infusible ink. Can you use it on cotton? Technically, no, but you, you can if you use a hack. I have demonstrated how to use infusible ink on cotton by using glitter vinyl underneath. So if you want to try using white glitter vinyl, you can do that and you know use this same process. You would just put the white glitter vinyl down first and put the infusible ink on top. Um, the second thing is, do you need a printer for infusible ink? No, you see, I didn't use a printer at all. Everything you need is in the box. The one thing you will need is a heat source that will reach 400 degrees. So you can do this with a Cricut Easy Press because it will definitely reach 400 degrees. Do you need to use polyester? I would say polyester works best with infusible ink because infusible ink is sublimation ink. They work exactly the same. When you're working with infusible ink, you should be using SVGs. Any SVG will work perfectly fine with infusible ink. The one thing to note about infusible ink is that it should not be used with images. So like if you wanted to use a photo, you would not be using a photo, 
you wouldn't be using infusible ink with a photo or any kind of image. Remember, they sh it should be used with cut files only. So hopefully you have found this process helpful. If you have any additional questions that I did not answer, please make sure to leave them down in the comments below and I will respond to them as quickly as I can. If you have found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.